here with more airline weekly managing partner seth kaplan uh, seth welcome i know that you have looked extensively at the malaysia airlines financial issues uh where, where do you think the trouble really began for this company yeah, well, we are talking about an airline that's losing more money than almost any other around the world of those that at least report audited financial results. And you're right, the, the problems do start before 370. This is an airline that is growing extraordinarily rapidly. Now, so are other airlines in Southeast Asia. The problem is that some of the other airlines that are growing are airlines like Air Asia, a low cost carrier also based in Kuala Lumpur, one that has very low costs of production. And so if its fares are very low, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, there are more, there's more than one way to make money in the airline industry. I mean, you could be McDonald's or you could be Roots Chris, essentially. But if you're going to be Roots Chris, you better be getting paid a lot more for your product. The problem with Malaysia Airlines is that it's selling Roots Chris, but it's getting paid McDonald's prices for yeah, it. Yeah, I know that you said like that in 2013, yeah. Malaysia Airlines was actually one of the world's uh, very uh, unprofitable carriers, right. uh, and its margins were extraordinarily slim. So what is this crisis now due to the company? Yeah, a company that seemed to have some liquidity concerns even before this. Now, you know, ironically, part of the reason it's in this situation is that it is a government-owned carrier, a lot of government interference. To be clear, there are some government-owned airlines around the world, Emirates and those sorts of airlines that are they are perfectly well-run airlines financially. But Malaysia Airlines, from a financial perspective, wasn't one of them. Now, as I said, the irony there, perhaps the fact that it's government-owned might now ha help, help it because the government likely providing cash infusion although the airline hasn't provided any government updates so far so we don't really know but we can only imagine we know this disaster has costed a lot of money and typically you have some kind of revenue impact as customers do what we call booking away from right. the airline well, I mean, and, and you airlines. can understand it I mean I think people would be very hesitant now to book on that airline but let's take a look at some you know other disasters in history you think about Air France after uh, its situation off the coast there of Brazil um, and it, it, it survives Seth um, what's different about Malaysia Airlines versus, say, an Air France. Great point, Trish. You know, uh, these kinds of disasters rarely prove the undoing of an otherwise strong airline. You mentioned Air France, great example there, and, and there are numerous other ones, but they often prove the undoing of an airline that's kind of teetering anyway. If we think of Pan Am Flight 103, TWA 800, Swiss Air 111, those disasters all occurring not too long before those airlines did go out of business. The other problem here is that this story won't go away. With all those others, you know, as, as tragic as they were, they were off the front pages within uh, a couple of weeks here. That hasn't happened yet. And so customers are, cons are continually reminded that this airline is in this situation. And let's face it, if you're doing a flight search right now and you have a lot of airlines to choose from, Malaysia Airlines, for some of those customers at least, probably isn't going to be their first choice. Yeah, no, probably certainly would not be their first choice. And that's an interesting point about uh, how much this company has been in the headlines versus the others, uh, where you had more closure, uh, certainly much more quickly uh, than, than anything like this. Uh, so what's the best path forward for them now? Are they, are they going to need to rely heavily on the government and get some kind of reinvestment? In all likelihood, yes. Again, that's that's the blessing that comes on the other side of the curse of government ownership, which hasn't been all that helpful there. You know, and, and to credit management, by the way, you know they have tried. Uh, they've tried some labor reforms, and and there you get the 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 meddling from the government saying, no, we can't really cut those jobs. For example, you have to continue flying unprofitable routes. Maybe the other blessing in disguise here is that the government finally lets them run the airline for commercial benefit, recognizing that there's plenty of air service from plenty of other airlines publicly owned elsewhere and private uh, to, to, you know, to provide to meet the market's demand to just let the airline run the business like an airline but they are going to have to get this off the front pages and, yeah, and, and no, that's well, uh, that it's going to take some time I mean I think until people actually ultimately know what in fact happened uh, it's going to continue to dominate uh, a lot of the news flow anyway uh, we thank you uh, for your perspective Seth uh, appreciate you joining us here today thank you Trish